Hello, Winternet. This is you and Spence and ESC Insight calling Rotterdam. It will be take it away, but for one last time. Coming up, we have our first performer for 2020. Someone puts in their notice and perfect harmony. Yes, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. This is Ewan Spence and the SC Insight team with another Insight News podcast, keeping you up to date with all the activity in the world of the Eurovision Song Contest. It's been a bit quieter in terms of the number of news items to get through, but in terms of the impact behind the scenes, wowzers. <laughs> Yeah, we might as well start with the Wowsers. Jan Olesan, the Executive Supervisor of the Eurovision Song Contest and Head of Live Events, which also covers Junior Eurovision, Eurovision Young Musicians and Eurovision Choir, has put in his notice in Geneva. He'll be leaving his EBU role after Rotterdam 2020. So the Netherlands will be his swan song in Supervisor's chair and telling us to take it away on the voting. He's going to be moving back to NRK and a new role to help define the future for the Norwegian public broadcaster. With more than 10 years as the point man for the song contest, he has overseen the introduction of 50-50 televoting and the introduction uh, junior Eurovision of online voting. Uh, he's uh, steered the contest in the EBU through the explosion of social media coverage of the contest he's dealt with the impact of rapid changes in online engagement popular music consumption and in public broadcasting itself there's going to be a lot of time to look back on the hit the changes that have happened during his watch and some of the issues that his successor will be facing but to yon all i would personally say this your days of mileage runs and top tier airline status collectings are coming to an end so just savor the prospect that in the future you're going to have so many weekends at home to listen to all that classical music. You're going to really, really enjoy that. But until then, could you make sure we have a really nice couple of song contests and junior song contests and stuff until then? Please, thank you. Right then, where are we up to for 2020? Publicly declared, 38 countries will be heading to Rotterdam. Um, the forms will be in at the EBU by now. They'll be working out how much the um, the delegation fee will be. So there may still be a chance to withdraw without financial penalty. So nothing is actually confirmed. Um from the EBU. Uh, but we do know, for example, that Ukraine has now come out. They've confirmed that themselves individually, and a number of un- other countries have done that as well, which means we've, we're at 38. Uh, we know Ukraine's coming back. We've not really heard of any other withdrawals, so we're probably looking at 42 this year. We might get 43 if Bulgaria make a decision to come back, or we might, you know, there might be some countries still in the ballot. So we're keeping an eye out for the official confirmation, but I'll be honest, I'm not expecting that till mid late November to come out of the EBU. Uh, looking back, Briefly, 2019, um, Iceland, um, although they have been fined €5,000 by the EBU for Hattery's visual statement in the green room during the show, or if you have confirmed, they will be entering Eurovision 2020. Uh, And, of course, looking forward to 2020, just a reminder, once again, tickets are not on sale yet. If you see them on sale just now, they're from touts or the people trying to buy future investment, don't go for them. Hotel prices are still very high. There'll be cancellations and stuff until March. Unless you can get a refundable hotel uh, booking now, which I have, uh, so I can change my mind, or if I don't end up going, it's cancelled without fee. So keep your options open. But do register your interest with your local OGAE clubs, if you're a member, uh, because they have ticket packages. They'll be working out the numbers now. They're still in negotiation to work out how many ticket packages will be available, but each individual club will have its own process for applying, so make sure you're familiar with that one. They'll have lists you need to submit to. There will be deadlines. Check your local listings for details. One other thing, of course, is there is another Eurovision uh, going on at the moment. Well, that's Netflix's Eurovision. Filming is taking place this week in Edinburgh um, at a lighthouse that I can literally see out of my back window. Uh, so I'm going to be able to nitpick the geography and how long it takes them to run between places when the film is released, let alone all the nitpicking fun I can have on Eurovision when the film of the public broadcaster's flagship contest is released on the commercial business platform. But we also know that Eurovision Netflix has a branding slogan. It's two 
lovely words, one in light font, one in heavy font. It is so on point. It is perfect harmony. Please tell me I can buy the merch. Junior Eurovision grows ever closer as well. It's happening Sunday the 24th of November in the Gliwice Arena in Poland. Tickets are on sale now so you can get yourself into there and sort out flights and all of that. Those are available. Go through the official website. Junior Eurovision.tv will get you through the uh, ticketing and such. Like, uh, what other stuff? Oh, well, uh, the good news, uh, if I just reach over here, is uh, we have a stage. Uh, pictures have been released. It looks like this. Uh, very nice it does too uh, notably uh, we have a catwalk going to the green room uh, another catwalk that goes out to a satellite stage a nice great big LED wall uh, behind the stage there's LED ribbons coming down from the ceiling to embrace the central diamond performance area it looks absolutely absolutely spectacular and oh so Eurovision uh, we also know a number of other people who are going to be performing on that stage um, two internal selections to come from since the last podcast Portugal have confirmed that Joana Amira will be singing her song Vern Comigo uh, and Spain although they've already announced Melanie Garcia uh, back in July uh, the song has no premiere as well Marta is up and available to listen in the usual places uh, we've got six uh, results from the, the uh, national final system uh, to go through here um, Albania now they've pre-recorded their national final uh, but they've not yet broadcast it so we don't know the whole scope of everything but we do know who the winner is um, it's Cilia Chile with the song My Childhood Friend of course it's in Albanian I'm, no I'm not attempting any more than that one uh, will it be taking part uh, in terms of language well, I think we're still at the 75% 25% rule so 75% in your country's language or one of your country's languages and the rest is free language uh, and for those of you keeping track for Albania 18 ran over in Belarus Eliza Vetta Misnikova with her song Pepelni Ash uh, has made it through that national final there to sing in Poland Ten ran uh, Netherlands. Uh, we have "Dance with You" is the song. Of course, Netherlands looking to do the double, and Matthew Hinzen will be taking that on his shoulders for ran. Poland has worked through its national final to find who's going to be singing for the country on home soil. Victoria Gabor is going to be singing "Superhero," topping both the jury and the public vote there three ran over in russia we have a duet tatiana and den Berel will be singing a time for us out of their national final system 11 ran and over in wales edin mai with salon yesiro uh, notably composed by sylvia strand uh, who was on piano for the islanders uh, when they sung for cyprus mac in 2010 has made it through to sing for wales's second spin at the junior eurovision song contest six ran <laughs> No competitive results from the adult contest yet. We're still winning uh, on the confirmation dates for our festival in Kenya in Albania. Uh, but we do have our first internal selection and our first name who's definitely going to Rotterdam as opposed to, yep, you're definitely going through to one of the uh, heats of Melfest. Uh, we have Hoover Phonic singing for Belgium. Now, it's a year for VRT uh, because the two Belgian public broadcasters take turn about. Even numbered years belongs to VRT. Um, RTBF do the odd number years so effectively um, this is VRT's follow up to Senec uh, and which is follow up to Laura Tesoro which is a follow up to Axel Hirsich so we're looking 14th in the semi-final um, for Axel 10th in the grand final for Laura 12th in the semi-final for Senec is our last three coming from VRT now Hoover Fornic uh, are a three piece band um, the keyboard player Frank Duchenne and guitarist Raymond Geert uh, with a rotating number of lead singers um, over the many years that the band has been in circulation. Current incumbent is Luca Kreisberg, uh, who won the Voice of Flanders 2017. Uh, we're looking at uh, pop sounds, a little bit of trip hop. Uh, you might have recognised them. They were on the Umbrella Academy, which is a big thing on Netflix. Ding dong! Um, I know what you did last summer. La Femme Nikita have been using their music as well. They've been approached for Eurovision a number of times, uh, but it's the victories both of Salvador Sobral and Duncan Lawrence that have seen the deal uh, to make it into a serious option for them the all important song is currently in demo format and a reveal is expected in their words early next year which my gut feel says we're looking at about 
February to see that one as well. If they've got a choice of two or three, they might leave it late Feb, just if, if they're playing a, a tactical, strategic game, or if they're just, this is our song. Yeah, why not? Valentine's Day. Let's mark it down as Valentine's Day. That was pure speculation. Don't go saying there was confirmation it was the 14th of February. There isn't. I just pucked a date out of the hat. Mid-Feb. That's all you're getting. Right? Good. Got that? Fine. Right then. Okay. A couple of bits of uh, country news to pick up as well. Uh, we have uh, the final of Dance Melody Grand Prix taking place in the Royal Arena in Copenhagen. It's going to be on March the 7th. We already knew that. The tweak for this year is that three of the ten songs are going to be chosen by the public. Previously, all ten were chosen by DR from the submissions. Uh, but there's going to be a nine-song preliminary contest being held in January um, on DR's P4 radio station um, to choose three of the songs uh, that will go into the mix in the national final. They're aiming for musical breadth rather than ten identical Eurovision songs. So it gives us a little bit more excitement out of it. Denmark to listen to in January because at the moment we've got a, we've got a couple of heats going on we've got the Czech uh, Republic final on Saturday the 25th um, so always nice to have more music to listen to as early in the season as possible Ireland have opened up their portal for submissions you have until October the 25th if you'd like to be RTE's uh, singer or songwriter or team uh, to go forward ideas can be submitted through the website although RTE do note that they reserve the right to approach artists directly and so they can look at the submission system um, or they may go out and just get something handed to them by somebody that they know very well but it is a place to get started details as always on Online and the broadcaster's homepage. Lithu Any have also noted down that they're cutting down what was once the annual marathon um, of their selection show down to just six episodes, um, which is going to be finishing in mid February. Um, I'm not going to get tied up in dates again on that one. Song submission is now open uh, with a little note that you can submit as many songs like, but each artist is only allowed one song at the televised stage so you can't have two of your own songs going head to head and you deciding which one submissions will close on that one on December the 8th so congratulations uh, first of all to Simone and to Ledoux which has just won the OGA second chance poll uh, second place went to Il Volo and third place to Anna Bergendahl and also congratulations to Barbara Dex for opening up her own fashion boutique store our best wishes go out to the startup going on there uh, well let's see a couple of dates just you to flag up 25th of October is Nepali Sapatso Moi it's the autumn edition of Glasgow's Eurovision event tickets are on sale now uh, and we'll have a link to the website on our website uh, we don't yet have details on ticketing uh, for Eurovision in concert, but we have got a Christmas event um, organised separately from the IC team. Uh, but Amsterdam Ziggo Dome on the 15th of December will host the big Eurovision party. And if my Dutch translation works well, it's the Big Song Festival Festival. Um <laughs> That, the big song festival festival i like that yeah uh, tickets are on sale now the price between 40 and 80 euros there's a big huge long guest list so uh we'll follow the link uh we'll have back at yesinsight.com to get all of the names that are performing but you've got lenny kerr in there neve kavanagh roslana kino lordy it is a really nice christmas lineup if you're looking um for a special and uh, as always you'll find all the links to that all our details previous podcasts podcasts and news stories going forward for the start of the season back at our website ESCinsight.com. thanks very much for listening short and sharp this week uh, just the guitars to go take it away <laughs> This week's CAC Insight News podcast was hosted by Ewan Spence, written by Ewan Spence and Ellie Chocolate.